I believe I started competing in 2007. Um, previously to that, in 2004, I had lost my older brother. And that was a very big motivation to, to seek, a, seek a safe haven in, in something. And uh, training was something that I was, I was already focusing on. Not that serious at the time, but um, when, when the unfortunate happened, it allowed me to bury myself in, in, in the gym. Because prior to that, I had spent some time away. And during that time, I, uh, which is probably, this is probably the first time I've ever mentioned that to, to, to anybody. Um, but going away was, was, was a very big teaching point in terms of training. You know, it, it, being away was, was, was a difficult time for me. I hated every second. Every second felt like days. Um, and there's, and there's, there's nothing you can do but try to cope. So my coping skills came about training. Training was, I kept, it kept me away from a lot of negative people, negative conversations. It, uh, it allowed me to do the same thing safely every single day to ensure that at a particular date, I was coming home. So when it snowed, I trained. When it rained, I trained. When, uh, when Josiah was gonna come and see me, I trained. When she would leave, I would train. And that became a big part of me. And in the process, you know, after, all the, after, after being able to get out, when I was released, I, uh, that's when my brother passed away. So that's basically what I came home to. And it was a tough time because to me, he was a, he was a machine. He uh, didn't have any bad habits at the time, but unfortunately, through the same process of being incarcerated and, and coming home and, and being the typical man of being able to, to handle just about anything, because as men, we think we can, we can handle everything. And, and we, we also have a lot of pride, so we don't want people to know that we're messed up. And he did that, he did that for a few years. And uh, a lot of people didn't know, I didn't know. And then all of a sudden his physicality started to change. And you started to notice that there was a problem. But by the time that, that came about, it was too late. And uh, he left us. So I made a vow at that time to, to make some adjustments, personal adjustments. Because we used to party together. We used to, we did just about everything together. And uh, to have had so much in common and to have seen that happen made me realize that I am just as vulnerable and capable of being in the same, in the same position. And I was in the same position through, you know, uh, overdoses. There's a lot of things a lot of people just don't know about my story. And, and, I, and I, I, I believe that this is, this is the time because I wanna take this opportunity to, that if I can change one person's life, then so be it. I know there's a lot of individuals out there that feel they can, they can manage a lot, they can handle a lot, that one thing doesn't have nothing to do with the other, that, you know, I'm functional, I can, I can drink every weekend or I can get high whenever I want to and so on and next thing you know, your life is in shambles and that's exactly, that's exactly what ended up happening. So I made a vow to, to make some personal adjustments and the gym was the very, the very beginning to that. All my life, I've always invested time, conversations, thinking and and just about my whole entire self to, to friends, to people that I thought were very important to me, to things that I thought were very important to me. So I poured a lot of energy into people and places and things that I thought was the most important thing in my life at that time. Not realizing that I was just destroying myself, not giving myself the opportunity to focus on me. And that's what the gym did. The gym allowed me for the very first time to look into the mirror and look at me, not my brother, 
not my friends, not the place I was at, but just me. And uh, the adjustment started physically. As time went on, I realized that to adjust my physicality, I needed to adjust my mentality. I needed to adjust my thinking, because my thinking, everything I processed was what either kept me from getting going to the gym, from doing the right thing and doing the wrong thing where my values were placed and my priorities, so a lot had to get rearranged. And it was hard, it was difficult, because there wasn't too many people I could sit down with and talk to about this. I had to kind of figure things out on my own. But I just always woke up every single day thinking, there's something more. There's, I, I know that there's more, and this possibly just can't be it. So, I, what I exercised was making sure that I wasn't going to break my routine. I wasn't going to allow myself to take my self energy and pour it into someone else or something else that I thought was more valuable than me. And it required a little selfishness. It required me to kind of, you know, turn away from certain people, turn away from conversations. A lot of people cut me off. I cut off a lot of people um, because it was everywhere you go is the same song and dance. And to make these personal adjustments, you have to accept the fact that, yeah, there are people who are infectious for me, who, who, who are not good for me because their, their priorities and their morals are not where minds are at. And if they're not, then chances are you're gonna, they're either gonna do what you do or you're gonna end up doing what they do. And neither one of those, we just couldn't have it. I did my first show in 2007. So after I did my first show, I, uh, which I believe John took second at that time. So John had a hell of a great start and I admired him tremendously. I looked up to him and, and, and when it came to, to the sport of bodybuilding, he had a really good genetics and and the ability to look so different from everybody else. And I just always was astonished by that. And in that show, he took second. Uh, I believe in my class, there were probably, I don't know, 40 guys at that time. The classes were much bigger at that time. And I was probably number 40. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Juan Morel was 39. <laughs> so with that being said, you know, with what we've seen today in the sport of bodybuilding, you guys who get that kind of place and they'll probably never get back up on stage again because ah, this isn't for me, which is what you tend to see a lot of more and more and more and more and more. Even with people that place in the top five, still, they're not happy because they didn't win. Not understanding that this is, you know, it's progression, it's, it's time, it's dedication. You have to fall in love with the sport. You have to fall in love with the ability to do what, what you do in the gym in order for you to continue to prevail in, uh, in, the, in the sport of bodybuilding. And that's what people fail to understand that, yeah, you might've got 40 here, but it doesn't mean that can't get better because my 40 became 20. That 20 became 10. That 10 became top five. And before you know it, you know, when we showed up, there was trouble. And that, that was something that I took a lot of pride in because I made that happen day in and day out, day in and day out. So with the same amount of energy that it took me to, to destroy a lot of things, to, to, to destroy my own life, it, uh, it was only right that I, was, that I gave myself that opportunity to put it in a positive aspect. And as soon as I did, wow, life just said, you know what, we've just been waiting for you. We've just been waiting for you, man. You just needed to wake the fuck up. And when we did that, it was, uh, I found happiness. I found control. I found clarity. I found positivity. And uh, I never knew what that was. I never knew what that felt like. And if, if you want to know what that feels like, it's picture yourself not having anything and still being the happiest person on the planet. That's what it feels like. Because oftentimes we think we need these amazing cars, we need all this money, we need uh, the lavish houses and the big jewelry and so on and so forth. And at the end of the day, no you don't. 
No, you don't. It's nice to have, but it's not something you need. And what I needed was to have clarity. Because once the clarity set in, I understood that everything I've been chasing all my life, I didn't need. What I needed was to put myself first. I wanted kids, I wanted to have children for a very, very long time. And it never happened until I started to bodybuild. It was almost like, listen, Marco, we've been waiting for you. Like, where you've been at? What's, you know, and finally God said, here you go, here you go, here you go, my son, my, my, my son. here you go. And uh, you, you're ready now. And that's when my two babies came about. That's when, you know, Josara, what, what, what can I say? There really, there, there's really not much to say. She's my rock. She's my spine. I can't, uh, I, 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 again, the clarity. It allows you to, to feel and see things past a certain point that you can tell yourself, I'm gonna die with that woman. And I love every second that I'm going to be able to do that for. Because that woman for me, has been, she was God sent. Literally, she was God sent. There's, there's very few people in your life that you're gonna be able to close your eyes and say that person loves me. Very few people that you, you, millions of people can say otherwise and you'll always stand firm and say, oh no, that, that's not true. I know for a fact that this is what it is. And um, Josira is, there is no me without her. There, there, there's no me. She, she's a big reason to why I'm designed the way I am. I learned so much from her. Because as men, we oftentimes think that we're just the teacher and it's our way or it's no way. No, no, no. That clarity allows you to say, you know what, teach me. It's okay. And when you're able to do so, your life just gets better. So much better. When I say better, I just mean you need less. Because you're so rich in a different in a different room. You just, you have everything. And uh, that's why nobody sees me in the street. That's why you will never catch me in a club. That's why you will never see me hanging out in some corner. And if you do, Josiah is standing next to me. <laughs>
working with Fakri, who did an outstanding job with me. Uh, we won. Uh, and, um, but what made that, that day so memorable was me getting in the lineup. I was one of the last guys in that whole class, which again was a very big one. And I remember looking down the hallway and seeing all the athletes in my class. <laughs> Visually, it just looked like everybody was bigger than me. It was my head. I was, I was, you know, your head starts playing games with you. But the good thing for me is that I can see that and I can, I can think things like that and I won't allow it to affect me on stage. So we came out on stage and, and when you get the response from the judges in the crowd, that's when you know, all right, nah, we're good, man. We're, we're, we're in shape. And we came out, we did pre-judging, got top five, we got first call out, came out. And uh, after pre-judging, I was losing by a point because at that time, during the nationals, between pre-judging and finals, you can find out what the scoring was. They have it posted in the host hotel. When you get back, you can see if they got you for second. You can see the point scoring system already happening. So I saw that I was losing by a point, which is kind of discouraging, you know, when you when you walk off and you think maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Let's see. And then you go back and it's like I'm, I'm losing by a point. Chances are, when you're losing already, it's very, very difficult to get that back. So in the process of between pre-judging and finals, I, everybody's carving up. I dropped my carbs. I didn't have no carbs, um, which allowed me to get a little bit more tighter. And when we came back for, for finals, you know, we was, uh, I had not mentally given up yet. I said, we're gonna have to fight this out. But during the finals, they rejudged it. They tapped the microphone. We're rejudging the scoring. And that's when I said, it's fucking on. It's on. My heart started pounding. I felt like I was going into a heavyweight championship fight, man. And the aggression came out. That's when I started really having a blast on stage. And I knew that I was, in, I, was, uh, I was the one losing my point. So it was my point to get back. And when they set us to the side and they started calling out the top five and, and then they got to the second place winner and they didn't call me and I realized that I had won. It was a, it was a very, very special moment. The crowd went nuts. My friends, I mean, it, was, it wasn't just me. It was like everybody felt exactly what I was feeling because how many times, or who, who gets that opportunity? How many times you see certain shows get rejudged? Is that the judges call based on what is it they see? And if they see things leveling out differently, they have the right to do so. And for, for them to have exercised that right with me at that time, you know, me going back and not having the carbs and those things, like it really told me, man, yo, you just made this happen. You know what I mean? You just, it just happened. And uh, it was seeing the fruits of my labor coming about. And as amateurs back then, your, your only dream is to get your IFBB Pro card. You see what people go through nowadays trying, they get so bent that it, they, everybody's chasing that IFBB Pro card. So to have accomplished that was like me graduating from Harvard. Because where I come from, and the things that I've been through, that was the biggest and most best thing I've ever done in my life, aside from, from, from being, meeting, marrying my wife. Uh, winning that IFBB Pro card was such a big self-accomplishment because nobody woke me up to go to the gym. Nobody forced me there. Nobody had to tell me, yo, you gotta do your cardio. No fucking body had to tell me anything. I got up and I got it done. And just so you know, I remember riding my bicycle because that's all I had back and forth from the gym. I would go food shopping and you would see this big galoot 
on a mountain bike, middle of winter, okay, with shopping bags from Pathmark on each side, let alone my gym bag in the back, and riding through snow, because it was my only form of transportation. But I was humble. I was humble to do that. But those are the, those are the, that's, it's, that's the foundation. How do you mess up having to do that every day? You're gonna go. You're gonna. You're gonna sacrifice and 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 do whatever it takes to get there. To just all of a sudden throw it away or disrespect it by not doing the work accurately and 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 fulfilling every training session to the T. Every time you go into the gym, I I, I just couldn't do that. And um, yeah, we won. We won the nationals. And for me, that was. That was the most amazing day in my life.